Hi, my name is Jonas Schellen. I'm a graduating PhD student at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, where I work with my advisors Kasper Hornbeck and Joanna Bellstrom. Today, I'm very excited to be here and present Overlap. The concept of Overlap started out by considering why we are only in one place at a time. In the physical world, that's just the way things are. We have only one mind and only one body to serve as a vessel for that mind. But still, the idea of being in multiple places at once sounds very useful. You can attack problems from multiple simultaneous angles, or you can look at and engage with distinct and distant locations at the same time. That's why this is a recurring theme in fiction, ranging from classic literature to modern cinema. In virtual reality, there is no technical reason that our body should only be in one place at a time. On the contrary, technically, it's actually quite trivial to duplicate a user's avatar body so that they are in multiple places at once. However, if our avatar is in multiple places at once, it then becomes a question of how to meaningfully perceive multiple distinct viewpoints from these multiple places so that it is actually useful for the user as well. That leads us to OLAP, which is an interaction technique that spatially layers multiple distinct and distant locations on top of each other so that the user can perceive and interact across these viewpoint locations from a first-person perspective. The OLAP technique takes multiple viewpoint locations and spatially layers them around the user so that they can perceive these distinct viewpoints from a first-person perspective. To preserve the ability to meaningfully interact, OLAP features the idea of one active and several passive viewpoints. The user can only interact in the active viewpoint. Objects in the active viewpoint are seen as opaque, whereas objects in passive viewpoints are seen as translucent. The active viewpoint can be switched, for example, with controller input. The key benefit of OLAP is that it allows a user to simultaneously perceive visual elements and spatial relationships in multiple distinct and distant viewpoint locations. Theoretically, this should result in reduced completion time and physical motion exerted during such tasks as finding and manipulating objects and spotting targets across distinct and distant locations. We evaluate this technique in a study towards this purpose. The study featured two tasks. One was an object collection task and the other was a monitoring task. The study took place in four distinct locations spread across a sample outdoor VR environment that measured approximately 100 meters across. In the object collection task, participants were tasked with multiple rounds of finding a number of coins spread across the four locations and then placing them in a chest at one of the locations. In the monitoring task, participants had to locate a floating disk at one of the four locations and repeat this a number of times. 20 participants completed each task using the OLAP technique and with a control condition where participants cycled through the locations one at a time, similar to ordinary virtual reality. We measured completion time, error rate, viewpoint switch count, physical motion exerted by the user's head, and subjective measures of body ownership, presence, and usability. As you can see here, participants completed both tasks significantly faster with the overlap technique. The motion data are also significant in favor of overlap. Of particular note are the motion data for the monitoring task, uh, which for the OLAP technique correspond roughly to the motion needed to turn around once. This suggests that participants moved no more than they absolutely had to. For viewpoint switching, however, participants switched more times than they had to across all conditions. This suggests that the method for switching in our implementation of OLAP, which was to manually press the joystick on a controller left or right to switch to another viewpoint in a predefined circular list, was not optimal. There was no significant difference in subjective responses across conditions. While our results are very promising, our implementation of the OLAP technique has some limitations. First is the viewpoint count. In our implementation, the active viewpoint was opaque and all passive viewpoints were equally translucent. 
In our study, this worked great with four viewpoints, but expanding this to 16 or even just eight can be seen here to introduce a degree of visual complexity that makes it hard to distinguish between the viewpoints. This could perhaps be remedied by introducing some notion of ranking between the passive viewpoints so that an algorithm would try to infer what the user is intending to interact with and focus more on that and adjacent passive viewpoints than other less relevant viewpoints. Another important point is evident in the switching data. In our study, participants switched more than is necessary in all conditions, but the study used manual controller input for switching. Therefore, a promising future development for the technique could be to automatically switch the active viewpoint. Similarly, this could be based on an algorithm that infers the user's interaction intent from such factors as gaze point, gaze dynamics, and the state and motion of the user's hand, and based on these factors, automatically switches to the viewpoint that corresponds to the best estimate for interaction intent. Since running the study, I have actually implemented an updated version of the technique that automatically switches based on what the user reaches for. This can be seen in action here. While this has not been empirically evaluated, anecdotally it works quite well. For more discussion points and potential future work, please see our paper. That's all for my talk, thank you for your time. On a closing note, I just want to say that I'm wrapping up my PhD over the next couple of months and I'm looking for new opportunities. At this point, I have authored several Kai papers that introduce novel and useful VR interaction techniques by challenging what our body should look like in VR. I'm very much interested in continuing to explore how new ways of being in our virtual bodies can be both useful and enjoyable for the user. So feel free to get in touch at the conference or through my links.